this module we looked into a specific layer in detail for the first time, the second layer, that is the data link layer. In this video we shall go over some of the topics covered in previous videos, allow you to test yourself and verify that you have indeed understood the material covered. In case you feel uncertain about a specific topic, you're welcome to go back to the relevant video and refresh your memory. As always, you're also welcome to post questions in the comments. So, what is the second layer responsible for? At this point, it should be very easy for you to answer. It is responsible for transmitting data between two hosts that are directly linked. The second layer splits data into chunks and then sends these chunks. How are these chunks called? They're called frames. We talked about reasons for splitting data into frames and covered a few framing techniques. Assuming flag byte with byte stuffing, with FB as the flag byte and EC as the escape character, how would you frame the following data? I recommend that you stop the video and try it for yourself before watching the solution. So, to send the data as a frame, we'll first write FB to mark the beginning of our new frame. Next, the data 1, 1, 2, 2, CA, FE, all is plain data. Now, since EC appears as part of the data, we need to stuff it. So we'll send a byte of EC and then another EC. Next, we have FB as part of the data. So again, we need to stuff it. So we'll send EC, then FB as the data. And lastly, another FB to mark the end of the frame. Let's review this from the receiver's point of view. She first receives FB and understands that this is a new frame. She then reads 1122CA and FE and reads them. Next, EC is encountered and the subsequent byte is thus treated as data. So EC is added to the receiver's data stream. Next, another EC is reached. So the following byte, FB, is treated as data. Last, FB is reached and this frame is over. The receiver now expects another FB that will mark the beginning of a new frame. Yet, as you know, this frame might be received with errors. What two strategies have we mentioned for handling errors? Well, one of these strategies was error correction. A very simple way of achieving error correction would be to send the data multiple times. Let's say we send each byte four times like so. Now this CA here has been received as CB. Since the receiver sees CA three times and CB only once, the receiver believes that the true byte is CA and the error is corrected. What is the downside of this approach? Well, the overhead, of course. So many overhead redundant bytes are being transmitted all the time. A more lightweight approach would be error detection, where the receiver only understands whether the data transmitted is valid or not. In case of an error, the receiver cannot correct the data. This can be achieved by a checksum. The sender performs a simple function on the data and sends the function's result after the data. The receiver then performs the same function on the data and checks its result against the received checksum. If the values match, the receiver assumes that the data is valid. If not, the receiver drops the frame. In case the receiver has to receive the frame correctly, the sender will have to send it again. After considering error handling strategies, we looked at an Ethernet frame with the following format. Let us consider the addresses. How long is an Ethernet MAC address? It is 6 bytes long. For example, this address. In one of the previous videos, we mentioned that the least significant 3 bytes are the host ID, where the 3 most significant bytes are the vendor ID. We also mentioned 2 special bits. Now we shall mention only one of them. Which bit states whether an Ethernet address is unicast or multicast? This is the least significant bit within the most significant byte. So in this example, we take the most significant byte, 03, and convert it to binary. So we get 00000011. 
the least significant bit is 1. So we know this is a multicast address, that is, it is destined to a group of devices rather than a single device. Remember that the broadcast address has all bits set to 1. Now let's say that the type or length field has the value of 80 in hexadecimal base, which is 128 in decimal base. Is this a type or a length? It's indeed length, as the value is less than 1501. What about 800 in hexadecimal base, which is 2048 in decimal base? That is type, indeed the type of a P packets. Now, let us consider the following network diagram. Given a hub, let's say that A sends a message to C, who will receive this message. Well, everyone will receive it except for A, that is B, C, D, and E. A hub doesn't learn the network structure and always replicates the frame it receives. It is basically a physical layer device, sending bits without understanding their meaning. We mentioned that this approach has many pitfalls. For instance, overload. B, D, and E all receive the frame sent from A and have to realize that it's not intended for them and thus discard the frame. In addition, the hub's behavior introduces a privacy risk. For example, B receives frames being sent from A to C and these frames might contain private data. We mentioned the other disadvantages of hubs in a previous video and for now, these will suffice. We therefore introduced a switch. When a new switch is added to the network, it first behaves a bit like a hub. That is, when A sends a frame to C, the switch will forward this frame to all ports other than A's, namely B, C, D, and E. The difference is that the switch learns the network structure. When the switch receives the frame from A, it observes the source address in the header and creates a mapping between A's MAC address and A's physical port. Now, if another machine, such as C, sends a message to A, what will happen? The switch will forward it to A and to A only. In addition, the switch will map C's MAC address and C's physical port. Next, let's say C sends a frame to B. What will happen? The switch has not yet learned B's address and will thus forward the frame to all ports other than C's, that is, to A, B, D, and E. As we've said in previous videos, a switch is a second layer device. It has to understand the Ethernet protocol in order to parse the MAC addresses. Altogether, you already know quite a bit about the data link layer and how it functions. We've also covered other issues in the previous videos, but this is quite enough for a recap video. After a short bonus video that discusses collisions, we shall move on to our next layer, namely the network layer.